So factors affect, affecting the reaction rate, the nature of the reactants. Nature of the reactants means what kind of reactant molecules and what physical condition they are in. So small molecules tend to react faster than large ones. Gases tend to react faster than liquids and liquids react faster than solids. And that makes sense because they have more kinetic energy, they're moving around more. Powdered solids are more reactive than blocks. Um, and that's because powdered solids have more surface area, so it's like they're almost already broken down to the individual molecule level. But if you put in um, like crystals of a reactant or chunks of a reactant, then first those chunks have to break apart into individual molecules to get dissolved before the reaction can occur. So more surface area uh, is fewer bonds that need to break before the reaction can occur, and more more area for reactants and products to um, to contact each other. Uh, certain types of chemicals are more reactive than others. So chemical reactivity in general. Um, potassium metal is more reactive than sodium. So potassium metal will react faster than sodium. Ions react faster than molecules. No bonds need to be broken and ions generally, a positive ion generally reacts with a negative ion and so plus and minus are literally attracted to each other like magnets. So when you put them into a reaction they get pulled together really quickly. There's a, a, a force that's pulling them together. But molecules are neutral so there's no magnetic force between molecules. They're more like billiard balls. Since they're neutral particles they have to bounce around the, bounce around the room until they bump into each other in the right way. So generally that takes longer than ions. Temperature affects the rate of reaction. So you can imagine that um, particles in a solid are not moving much at all, right? They're stuck. And if they're stuck, they can't bump into each other. And if they can't bump into each other, then they can't have a chemical reaction. Because chemical reactions occur when particles bump, it, bump into each other. So um, liquids are moving around more. So liquids can bump into each other more than solids so they those reactions occur faster and finally gas particles are moving around very quickly and they have lots of kinetic energy because they're not stuck to their neighbors so they can get a lot of momentum they have a lot of time to build up build up speed right and when they're flying through space so gas particles generally have much more kinetic energy than liquids or solids and they can react much faster and as we increase the temperature, then they go even faster. Those particles move even more quickly. And as they're moving even more quickly, then they, when they hit each other, they have even more momentum. And they can overcome the activation energy barrier uh, at, a, at a higher probability and lead to successful collisions that are going to cause reactions. Um, other factors that affect the reaction rate are catalysts, and catalysts are other chemicals that we put in a reaction. So we might have a reaction that we would write A plus B makes C, and then we might put a catalyst, catalyst in the reaction, but the catalyst is not A or B or C. It's not actually part of the reaction, but it's another molecule, another chemical that I put into the reaction with A and B, and that catalyst helps A and B turn into C even faster. So it, it, that happens without the catalyst being consumed. So um, sometimes it's just metal. If I take some powdered metal and I throw it in a reaction, then that reaction between A and B can happen far more quickly and turn into C and then when I am finished with the reaction I can get all the metal back. I just pull the metal right out of the reaction and none of it changed at all. So the reason that that happens, we'll look at different reasons, but one reason for, with the metal might be that A and B can stick to the metal really well or A sticks to the metal really well and then B can find A easier because it's stuck to the metal. So there are molecules, there are chem certain chemicals that can cause A and B to react faster than they would if that chemical was not there. So most catalysts are used to speed up a reaction. These are called positive catalysts. Some catalysts are used to slow down reactions and those are called negative catalysts. Catalysts can be homogeneous, which means they're in the same phase. So if I have a reaction that is um, in solution, 
then I would, it's a dissolved ion maybe, then my catalyst would also be a dissolved ion. I can also have heterogeneous catalysts, and this is where if I have a, a reaction that's happening in solution and the reactants are ions, the catalyst might be a solid, like the metal. I would throw in solid metal and the ions might stick to it and make the reaction go faster or slower. Um, and we're going to look at, there's other, other kinds of catalysts than the kind that just are what we call heterogeneous surface catalysts, like a metal where, where the molecules might stick to it. There's other kinds of catalysts that also might make reactions go faster, and we'll look at what those are. Another thing that affects the reaction rate is the reactant concentration. So um, when I have, if I have a reaction that's occurring between A and B, and A and B must run into each other to create C, and I have 10 A molecules, and I only have two B molecules, then that reaction is not going to have a very fast rate, or you know, just so it's not over right away. Let's say there's 120. 100 A's, 20 B's, then the concentration of B is lower than the concentration of A, so there's not many B particles. A, when they're bouncing around, the A particles are going to have um, a, a high likelihood of bouncing into each other, and A plus A doesn't make anything, so the A particles will just bounce off of each other and not have a reaction. But if I get more B particles, and now I have 100 B particles, then the reaction will go faster. Because now, when the, all the particles are bouncing around in the same box, the A particles have a higher likelihood of bouncing into a B particle to create a reaction, because there are more B particles. So the larger the concentration of reactant molecules, the faster the reaction occurs. Um, concentration of gases depends on the partial, partial pressure of the gas. Higher pressure is higher concentration. Concentrations of solutions depend on the solute to solution ratio. So um, if we're talking about uh, a, a pure liquid, then we wouldn't necessarily talk about the concentration of those liquids. We would just talk about the amount that we had of each one. But if I'm talking about con um, a solution, then I might talk about the concentration of each reactant in terms of its molarity because A is actually going to be um, uh, something dissolved in a liquid. So in this case, maybe A is sodium chloride, but it's dissolved in water. And then B maybe is glucose, but it's dissolved in ethanol. So in that case, if A and B are not pure substances, they're mixtures, they're actually solutions, then I would talk about their molarity. I'd talk about their concentration.